Do you like my pyjamas? I made it. Let me show you. Hi there. My name is Katinka. I'm the seamstress at the cottage and welcome back. Today I'm going to talk to you about the pyjamas that I'm wearing. I finally made my pyjamas. There's still threads on it. I've been talking about making pyjamas since I got this fabric. I think it was in November or December last year. And I found this fabric at Joanne's. It was on sale for... I think it was $1.99 a meter or $2.99 so I couldn't leave it but I ended up not buying enough I was one meter short to get out my pajamas so I had to go back and get another yard and it was six dollars a meter cost me more for the one yard than it cost me for all the fabric for the rest almost but I got that and I'm very chuffed with these pajamas I use simplicity don't be fooled by that number that is not its number but this is the number S9856. So I got this on a simplicity sale a while ago and I've been wanting to make pajamas so I thought this is on sale I'll just use this pattern. I have a qualms with this pattern though. The one is these pants. Do you see those slits on the side? I don't like slits on the side of my pajamas especially if it's winter pajamas. The other thing these pants were so wide I could literally cut off this much on both sides and they are still really quite wide as you can see otherwise I love the pants and I love that it's got pockets so now we get to the top love the top but it's cut very strange here at the top this one was cut almost like this so it makes this bulk up here if I make this again I will keep that in mind also when I cut out the collar it was huge it came down like that now, I don't know who wants pajamas with such a big collar. When you sleep, you don't want a bulk thing around your neck. I don't. So I, I chose not to put that in. And in the end, I just used a collar band to make it almost like a mandarin or a mandala shirt. I'm quite happy with the final result. I also did not put the buttonholes in because I don't open my buttons. I just pull it over my head. So I literally just put a buttonhole up here. And for the rest, I used the buttons to keep it together. And that's it. That's my pajamas. It was at this point that I realized I was a yard short on fabric. So off I went to Joanne's and got another one. And then I was able to cut it all out. But it was still a tight squeeze. Has been cut out and ready to sew. All the pieces are over here. And I've also cut out the violin and iron it on. And the first step is to pin the pockets to the sides of the pants. It's fixed like this that irritates me. These pants are made to fold over and get elastic. But they've cut these pockets to go all the way into the waistband. So then it's very thick on your hips. And that's not comfy to sleep in. And then also the depth of the pocket is very short. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move my pocket down. So when I fold it over that it's not so thick. And then I'm also going to cut it up higher on the side so my depth of my bucket is deeper. So in the end, I first cut out this much and that wasn't enough. So then I cut out a bit more and I'm happy with that. That gives me quite a nice pocket. And then there's also still enough space for your hand. And when this folds over, there's more than enough space for your hand. Then it's just one layer inside of the waistband. All bent and I'm now going to sew them down. And then I am going to overlock it. I'm also going to do the front crotch seam and the back crotch seam and overlock them as well. I've sewed the center seam and I've sewed the pockets in place and now I'm going to overlock everything. When I do the inside leg seam, I let the one fold one way and the others go the other way. And I let the stitch lines meet up and then I start first with overlocking and I overlock it from the inside down to the bottom then I come back and I overlock it from the inside down to the other side and I find then my crutch line meets up in the middle because sometimes if you start from one one end and you work your way through to the other end the material might move into different directions and then you might end up with more material on the one side and this way you don't have that happening. Next step is the inside leg. I start from the one end and I literally just sew it right through to the other end. But because I've overlocked it already, everything will stay in place. 
side seams are done and I'm now busy with the pockets. With the pockets I just sew them right around. When I get into this corner I just zigzag it up and down because when you overlock you sometimes go overlocking and then you overlock some of this with it and you cut off stuff that you don't want to cut off and this way I know that's not going to happen because the overlocking will stop right there. And I won't overlock the top because that is going to go into the hem for the elastic. So you're not going to see it and it will not unravel. Next, I'm going to overlock the pockets right around. And I'm going to overlock the waist part so that I can next put in the elastic. When you overlock the waistband part, make sure that your crotch, if the seam goes that way over there, then it must go get that the same direction at the top. And like my side seams are open, so I'm going to keep them open while I'm overlocking. The next step was to pin the cuffs to the sleeves. I then added a little piece to the back leg because I didn't have enough fabric to cut it long enough. I tried to match up the plaids as much as possible and then I proceeded with the elastic. Elastic, I start in the middle front and middle back and then the side seams and then I fill in all the spaces in between. Next, I'm pinning the shoulder seams together fronts and backs. Oh no wait, I need to overlock them first. Overlock your shoulder seams so that you can sew them together. And I usually do bulk overlocking where I just keep on going because you can always cut the excess off at the end. And then I just cut them all loose like this and now I'm going to sew the shoulder seams together the front to the back. I have pinned the collar and now I'm going to do batch sewing over there, the collar and all of the things that I've pinned. It is all these things that you do in batches that makes your sewing process go so much smoother. I'm a little bit irritated with myself. I've put these elastic, the elastic into these bands and I did such a good job but it's a little bit short on the back about that much. So, I looked at the pattern and you were supposed to put this width of elastic in. And as you can see, the one I put in is much wider than this. So, I have to unpick. I've unpicked the pant elastic and I've pinned it again. I'm going to sew that now. And then for the shirt, I've pinned the sleeves in place and I'm going to sew that. <music> Let's talk about gathering stitches. Usually I do three lines if I have to gather it a lot, but this sleeve here only needs to be eased in a little bit. I can show you on this side. So it's not a lot of gathering. So because this is just ease gathering, I only did two rows of gathering stitches. I would usually do one right on the edge and then the second and the third one. If you look at your stitch, your machine always have one side that it pulls it through more than the other side. And with gathering stitches, the side that you sewed on that you can see, the opposite side is the side where it will gather more. So I sewed on this side, so I know that this is the side that can pull in easier. And then I just take my threads, and when I pull them in, I pull them in all the way, even though it's just a little bit of gathering, because by pulling it in all the way, my gathering stitches are more evenly spread out afterwards. So I've pulled it in as much as it would go and now I smooth them out until they fit into that part where I want it to fit. So as you can see, I've spread it out now and it can go a little bit more. I did make a knip for my middle sh shoulder where the shoulder is and I'm going to pin it in there on that spot. When I have it the right size, you sometimes have to anchor your gathering stitch. So to anchor the stitch is you hold the threads on the side, like that, and then you go to the opposite side and you take your thread and you pull them both at the same time. And that will lock it so it won't go, it will move a little bit, but it won't move too much. So let me show you on this one. I have both threads and I'm just going to, Pull it 
until it locks. You can feel it actually when it locks. And then you can just smooth it out a little bit. And then it won't push out while you're sewing. Another thing that you can do is to pull the thread through by just pulling there and pulling it out on this side. So I just grab that, pull it through, and then I make a knot by going over and then under. And that's your standard slip knot. And this type of knot does not <laughs> go loose <laughs> as easily as any other knot. The only reason why I don't like making knots, because if you pulled it into much, then it might be too small for the hole it must go into. And it's very difficult to undo a knot like that. It's much easier to just smooth this out. For the top, I am now going to iron the sleeve seams towards the inside. I just find they fit sitting better on your arms then. Open up these seams and iron them flat as well. And iron the front, this fold over part. And then I can do the sides. Ironing is one of those actions that we are often tempted to skip. But a good iron changed a homemade project from homemade to professional. So take your time to iron the side seams open, flatten the pockets, do the hems, because all of this will speed up your sewing process. Pants have been ironed and I've ironed the hem up so that I can know where to sew. And then these pants are finished. And it's just the top that I still need to finish. But I'm really happy with my progress so far. Next, it's time to do the underarm seams and the side seams. And to make sure that they meet in the middle where they're supposed to, I like to start from where the underarm is and just work down and then work down towards the sleeve. Because I find this way, I actually end up with the underarm meeting up exactly. But sometimes, even if I pin, they still move. And it irritates me. This seam needs to meet up in my book. And while I'm sewing, I keep this finger between the two layers and I hold it like that. And then I just give a little bit of tension because with flannel, it's like almost like velvet. Velvet also, the two fabrics will move if you don't use a walking foot. And flannel does a little bit of that. But by putting my finger between the two and or this finger between the two and holding it with this finger, I actually find that it's easier to manipulate the fabric to not move and to meet up at the bottom. It's done. And now let's do other side. The nice thing about flannel is that it kind of likes to stick together. So you don't have to use as many pins as you would use with chiffon or silk or satin. And so flannel is my lazy fabric. I just go for it. Unless I want to do pattern matching or make sure my straps stay together, which I'm not going to do on pajamas, I can just go for it. One done. Let's do the other one. I am now busy with the collar. So my first step is to take the iron on board and pin it right side and wrong side together. So it's literally on the inside of the collar. And I've decided not to do the full collar, like on there, but just to do the collar band, because then it will give me a mandarin collar, which I would like more. Now I'm going to sew this down. That is done. And now we need to do our knippies. This makes that the collar ease into the neck, because it's going to fold up. And if you don't do this, then it's just going to make a bulk in there. This way, as you can see, they come together because it's smaller there than it is over there. And it just gives you a smoother finish. Now we do the other side. Now this side is smaller up here than it is at the bottom. You can get away with not clipping it because, as you see, it goes flat. But I like to knip it because I like my collar to stand up a little bit. Here I will just go and do it like that so that it can open up a little bit. And I will keep on doing that all the way. So as you can see, I'm not doing it where I've done that cut. I do it like in the middle 
of, of the whole piece. So my next one will be over there. There. That's the shoulder seam. I like to cut that out completely because that takes away some of the bulk. The next step is to fold this over and encase my little button band. And I am going to sew it from there to there, but I'm going to do it from that side on its sew line that I have there. I have also cut away all the access over there because then it just gives me a smoother finish. So it's like that and I'm going to sew it from there up until there. That's done. Now I cut away this excess and then I fold it over. And then I just shape it there until I'm happy with it. There we go. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side. And it looks like that. So I'm going to iron this flat now and fold it over on there. But first I'm just going to do some knips on this side as well. Just so that when it folds in that it has a bit of ease. Let's go and iron this. So when you start with your collar you're going to go in there, iron that part flat, fold this over and iron it flat at the top. I've ironed this collar beforehand and then I fold in here and I let it overlap where my seam line is, like a millimeter. And I'm just going to keep on ironing it until it's all done. And then I'm going to stitch it a millimeter from the edge right around. For the hem, I have pinned it like that. So what you do is this is the button band that was fold over like that. You're going to fold it back and pin it and then just sew there. That's done. And now you just flip it over. And that's the start of your hem. And now I'm going to sew the button band down all the way to the top. This is the thing that drives me up the wall. My bottom cotton is done. And look, I only have this much more to go. Oh well, let's wind some bobbins. Buttons. I have a whole bag of buttons. And these are the only dark ones I have. So I found all of these. They're all different. But this is just pajamas, so I don't think that would make a difference if they match or don't match. As long as they close and they stay closed. So, this part was too thick for my buttonhole foot. So this is the worst buttonhole I've made in a while. I had to make it manually. But it will hold the button and that's all that matters. Do you like my pajamas? I made it. Let me show you. It's warm, it's comfy, it's got pockets, and I made a hat to match because you need a hat to sleep, especially if you don't have hair.